These fields for the flag are giving me the red, white, and blues, y'all. <laughs> Hey, welcome to another Food for Thought, y'all. This is gonna be a kind of a rant, so buckle up and get ready for this one. So I have been just put so put off by some of the responses that I've been getting to my uh, video talking about, you know, the burning the flag video, which obviously is not about burning the flag, but I do bring up the fact that burning of the flag is a protected form of freedom of the freedom of speech. It's protected under freedom of speech. So I didn't make that rule, y'all. The, the, they made that rule. <laughs> so, and I just was, I was just coming to report it. But some of the feedback that I have gotten from people has really blown me away. You know, I'm gonna be honest. Clearly the audience, on this channel, comes to this channel because they're interested in having a conversation that goes a little bit more deeply than the sound bites and the catchphrases that get used around the internet, especially around YouTube, around social media. You know, th those things don't really get used here unless we're trying to like interrogate them. And I also want to thank y'all for commenting on my singing. You guys were so sweet. You guys were so sweet about that. Um, but one thing that I kind of want to, just in general, there is a level of hypocrisy that I have seen over the last couple of weeks. And first of all, I want y'all to know today I'm having coffee. I ain't trying to keep calm today. So just get yourselves ready for that. So there's a level of hypocrisy that's been floating around and I think we all see it. And these are wonderful teaching and learning moments. We spent the last year more talking about freedom of speech and how that needs to be protected at all cost. While we are having this conversation about freedom of speech and freedom of exp expression, the whole time Colin Kaepernick is under attack for taking the knee, y'all. Come on, I know y'all watch Game of Thrones. I know a bunch of y'all watch Game of Thrones and you know that taking the knee is the ultimate show of respect. It's the ultimate show of loyalty, and one might even say the ultimate show of submission. So for Colin Kaepernick and all of these athletes to be taking the knee, whatever you think about their reasoning, it is not disrespectful. It is a show of, you know, reverence right, a reverence, it is a show of, it is an act of defiance, but it is done with reverence. It is done with reverence. It's not because, you know what, they could full on, you know, they could put up, they could be on the, on the ball field putting knees up and then we'd have something to get tight about, right? But we do have people who are, you know, trolling around YouTube and around the the internet saying things that are horrendous, that are the equivalent of throwing up the middle finger up to throwing up the middle finger at people to say, hey, I'm just expressing myself. It's just freedom of speech. I should be able to do that. And I think in some ways that flies in the face of what, you know, America is supposed to stand for. It's supposed to be about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you think that stamping on other people's happiness is the only thing that makes you happy, you don't get it, right? You're not quite getting it, right? So all of that, all of that, all of that. We also had the, the hypocrisy uh, around XXXTentacion. People were up in arms about this depiction of the little boy being hoisted in the air, right? Oh my goodness, the, the, the foolishness from people. We know it's a, it's a, it's a movie, y'all. It's a movie. He's in a harness. He's connected to wire. They probably got Foy, you know, which is the professional fly company. The same people who helped Sandy Duncan fly around the stage in Peter Pan. The same people who made the angel fly in Angels in America probably were there making sure that that boy safely got lifted up in the air gently lifted up in the air like there was the slightest little wheeling of the feet. It was cute. I'm sorry. And if that offends you for me to say that the way they showed it was, it was kind of corny and kind of cute. It was like the way it would be done in the school play, right? And so all that to say, you know, and I compared that to the movie It and the fact that in that movie we see, you know, kids getting, ooh, torn apart. <laughs> torn apart. It's horrible, y'all. But, you know, the thing that people decided to get up in arms about that week, while, you know, it was making 60 million at the box office in two days, um, or three, uh, the thing that people decided to get up in arms about was the XXX Tentacion. Before I go into this, I want y'all to know this isn't what's important. 
This is just what I'm talking about today, right? This is my form of entertainment. This is just what I'm talking about today. What's important is to be focusing on is the fact that we have all of these national, natural disasters and how is the country and how are, are the world, how's the world gathering its resources to be able to deal with what's happening in these places, right? That's what's important. That's what's important. But in the meantime, we're just having a little conversation about some nonsense that I happen to be pointing out, that I happen to be pointing out. So with this whole idea of freedom of speech, and I'm gonna call you out, vlog like no one's, like no one's watching, I'm calling you out because you do this all the time and I think that you're, I think that you're trying to be a good person. I think you're trying to be a good person and I think you're trying to be a thoughtful person. I don't think that you are aware of how your line of questioning can be offensive. In the same way that you can see that it might be offensive for someone to take the knee during the national anthem, you might have to like look in to see how your line of questioning might be offensive. You, you do something called, um, some people call it victim, victim blaming, but um, I don't like to call it victim blaming because that, in, that assumes that somehow something about that person's character made them, you know, open to what happened to them. And it's not about that. There was someone who wanted to do something bad, right? Someone is doing something that they shouldn't be doing and they have, the, and that person just happened to be the target of their bad behavior whatever that bad behavior was. So I like to call, I call, like to call them the person who was targeted by whoever did the bad thing, right? So let's think of things in context, right? So like, I don't like to think of, you know, you know the people who were um, enslaved in the United States as they weren't, they're not victims, they weren't victims. They were people who were targeted by some, you know, broke broken-minded people who thought it was okay to put other people in chains drag them away from their country and bring them to another country right so whatever that's whatever it is right i don't want to get too much into that but i do want to look at the way that we use language to keep certain people out there while we are all safe in here feeling like we're above and beyond what's happening right but that's not the case we're involved we're very much involved i'm gonna tell you why okay so we have that hypocrisy. So to ask, to say that maybe if Colin Kaepernick hadn't taken the knee, maybe people would listen to his message. Maybe that's why people don't, uh, uh, you know, want to listen to what black people have to say. You know, it's this whole tone policing thing. And, and many of you have made comments about that in the, in the comment section. And I thank you for calling that out so I don't have to do those basics, right? Because this is not a 101 course, y'all. This is an advanced. This is the advanced course, y'all. It's not a one-on-one, -on -one, right? So tone policing, all of these things, ways to put the onus on the person who is being targeted uh, by the bad behavior, right? And instead of focusing on, yeah, that bad behavior, that sucked. Regardless of the way this person says it's happening to them, regardless of how they, you know, what might cry out or call out or scream or whatever it is that they do, we gotta focus on, you know what I mean? If somebody is being attacked and they cr scream help, we're not gonna be like, quiet, you waking up my kids. We're gonna be like, oh, that person needs help. Let me see what they need, right? So, so all of that is, no, we don't do that. We don't do that, right? So that's one thing. And then the other thing is to assume that the people, oh, well, since all these people seem to love the flag, then, and if that person, you know, even though their rights are being trampled on, if they don't want to, you know, if they, if they decide to, you know, kneel instead of, you know, standing for the flag when they're being trampled on, then, you know, that they should get with the program. They should get their pro with the program, stand up, put their hand on their heart, right? Just because that's what everybody's doing. No, that's foolish. That's like, come on y'all and as vegans you know that that's not it just because the majority of the people are you know see animals as food doesn't mean that vegans you know th does it mean that vegans are wrong because they should just get with the program of course not might does not make right you know appeal to popularity right that's a, a logical fallacy so get that out of there no 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 just because most people think that it's okay to ostracize someone for expressing their freedom of speech in a particular way it doesn't mean that we should 
take away that person's freedom to express themselves. It's just, you know, we understand that that is not, that's not the reason, that's not enough of a reason. It doesn't put that, it doesn't automatically make that person right either, but it doesn't make them wrong just because most people think they're wrong. No, that's just not the way it goes, right? When most people thought that the world was flat, it didn't necessarily mean that they were right, right? Didn't necessarily mean they were right. Um, when people thought that the sun revolved around the earth, right? Most people thought it didn't make them right. Didn't make them right. And, so, and sometimes it takes a, uh, a dissenting opinion to lead us to the truth. Sometimes it takes a dissenting opinion to lead us to the truth. So that's just, we got to get down with that. Okay, so the other thing is that we have this, we have to understand that there are certain ideologies. The ideologies are divisive. Not the discussion of the ideologies that are divisive. The ideologies themselves are often divisive, right? So if this person has a belief in one particular religion and another group has a, a belief in another type of religion, those things are incompatible. They are incompatible. And so it's going to create, that is what is going to create the divisions. And often the ideologies around patriotism in the United States create uh, incompatibilities. So for example, if you have a national anthem where one of the verses talks about, you know, the inevitability of slavery, if you are someone who's a descendant of slaves or someone who has been viewed as, you know, you know the, a descendant of people who were enslaved, then you're gonna look at that in a slightly different way than someone who finds it more convenient to just simply accept the national anthem. This is the national anthem. I didn't do anything wrong. It's just what they told me to do. I'm just doing what I told I'm being a good citizen. Why can't you just get with the program, right? It's not, it's not possible. It's not possible for that person to get with the program because it goes against what they understand to be true. And whether that's their ideology or whether it's fact, whatever it is, it makes it impossible. So it's the ideology that gets in the way in the same way that religion gets in the way. These ideologies are our modern forms of religion that create all the same harms of religion. So if you're an atheist and you want to uh, be a skeptic and question you know, the, uh, the existence of God, I think you should be the same person who's looking at these ideologies that people are professing and saying that these are ridiculous. These are absolutely ridiculous. Right. And so people want to say, and this is the, the, the thing that really upsets me, um, you know, this one, you know, the, the, the support for the troop, the blind support for the troops, blind support for the police and all these things like that. OK. All right. It's OK. It's cool to support our troops. Right. We support our troops. Here's how our troops get supported, right? Yes, you know, they, they are, you know, they do this out of courage, out of sacrifice, out of valor and all of these other things, but they also get a paycheck. And guess where that paycheck comes from? That's the next thing I'm gonna talk about. That, that paycheck comes from our taxes. We pay taxes, I certainly do. I pay taxes in the, in the tens of thousands every year, right? That's how I support our troops. And they get a huge chunk of that tax, of those taxes, right? So I can say probably out of pocket, I'm paying, you know, a, a couple of grand a year for, uh, to pay, to, you know, support the troops, right? There, there is some, but there's, there is some, you know, one, someone's get, someone got paid a, a week's salary or two, two, a month's salary or two months salary, um, from the taxes that I paid, right? So I support the troops fully, right? And that's the other side of it. So this idea of patriotism, I do not owe patriotism. I owe taxes. That's the transaction. I pay taxes for protections of the state. I pay taxes for the services that I receive, right? And all of these things. So every time somebody says like, you owe, if it wasn't for the sacrifices that were made by you know, these laws and that flag, no, it was the sacrifices that were made by people and much of it is in the way of taxes in our modern age and in the past, you know, we wanna talk about the greatness of America, what makes America great? It wasn't patriotism that made America great. What made America great was the exploitation of labor, has been the exploitation of labor since its inception. That is what made America great. 
And then we lucked out at the end of the Second World War when the rest of the world had been bombed into, you know, close to an extinction, right? I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, but you know, Europe was, was smashed, right? Europe was not, they weren't, those na nations were not functioning up to speed and so America got to take a jump. So from the 40s through the 70s, America was jamming. We were the industrial leaders of the world. That's what made America great, y'all. That's what made America great being isolated from the rest of the world. So after these world wars, there were two of them, remember, that were not back to back, but they were pretty close, on, one on top of the other. There's a, about a 30 year difference in between there, but come on. Those, because of that uh, 20 year difference, really, because of the, because of, uh, the fact that we've been isolated, the United States has been isolated, it has been able to take on a leadership role in industry because these other nations have been being, bo have had bombs dropped on them, you know, other than Pearl Harbor and, you know, the, the, um, the various, uh, uh, acts of terrorism that we've, uh, been the targets of the United States has basically gotten away scot-free in the world so yes of course we America became the leaders of the world but eventually guess what folks caught up folks caught up that's the reality and so other countries other nations were able to set up factories so that we were able to uh, exploit their labor in other places right so I don't like I don't owe anything to patriotism I don't owe much to the founding fathers except that they were really good at exploiting labor, right? Let's be real about this. Let's be real about this. If we wanna talk about stuff, let's talk about what happened. Let's not talk in these platitudes. Cause all that stuff, that's my feels. That's your feels for you. That's your feels for you. That is not fact. And when we, talk, when we speak in fact, we realize that a lot of the crap that is going on now isn't not, it's not about, you know, oh, immigration. If it weren't for immigration, we wouldn't have, you know, the people in the US, we wouldn't have what we had. We owe pretty much everything that we have to immigration because we've used immigration as a way to exploit labor. So that's what that's about. So when people want to talk to me about patriotism, I'm just like, no. And the horrible part is that we use these ideologies to preserve the idea that there are certain people who, whose, whose thoughts, whose feelings, whose issues, whose lives even don't matter because they can't get in line with these ideologies because they are incompatible. And then once they aren't in line with these particular ideologies, then they're not, you know, they're not American. And when you're in a, you know, in a nation that's as nationalistic as the United States is, then you might as well say that they're not human. And then they're not part of the moral community and they're not deserving of our care and of the same behavior. They can be treated in the same way that we treat animals who we don't embrace and we don't accept as part of the moral community. And that's how racism <laughs> works. That's how racism, structural racism works, because it allows us to use ideologies, which are the apparatuses for those ideologies to maintain those uh, systems of thought are maintained by the state. We believe these things because they are maintained by the state. Otherwise, why did the Department of Defense spend $7 million over a four year period to get folks supporting the troops and feeling patriotic? Our taxpayer dollars go into a system that maintains a system of belief that allows the continued subjugation of certain s citizens of the United States who cannot buy into certain ideologies because those ideologies are inconsistent with what they understand to be true. And yet people say, but most people believe it. Why can't you just go along with it? It's okay. Right? There's no racism. We're just going along with things as if those beliefs are not maintained intentionally through a system of mechanisms that from generation to generation pass down beliefs that are so innocent like 
you have to respect the flag. You have to stand for the national anthem. So I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do about that, but I think one thing that is going to need to happen is the same way some people need to take a chill pill on this religion thing and understand the destructive components of religion. We have to understand the destructive components of our ideologies, one of them being our patriotism. Certainly in the United States. So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.